What's going on YouTube? Truck and Rob coming at you here. We're going to do a GoPro on the dash again. Got the wide angle lens going for you there. A uh, little bit of video here about, uh, I want to kind of uh, revisit my e-log video. Uh, put out a video uh, a while ago. Uh, the title of it was E-Logs Are Bad For Your Health. Alright. Now I'm sticking to my guns on that. And I'm a firm believer that that is true. Just the title alone. However. I want to make a revision. And kind of add on to it here. Uh, last night I was watching a video. Uh, by my buddy. Uh, Stephen Neal. On his new channel. Called Trucking On The Go. Uh, if you guys haven't checked that out, go check that out. Um, he's going to be doing both both YouTube channels, uh, Stephen Neal uh, channel and Trucking On The Go channel. Uh, I was watching his E-Log video, his ELD video there on his new channel, Trucking On The Go. And uh, man, oh man, he just uh, he hit the nail right on the head. Uh, it's going to be really hard to add uh, anything on top of that. Um, but I like to say that the situation that he was talking about of, of the 14 hour rule, uh, I'm going through that exact, his example, <laughs> it's kind of funny, the example that he was, he was talking about, well, I'm living that example, uh, right here, right now, as we're going down the road on my clock, um. Now, as you know, uh, any of you guys that have been following uh, the e-log mandate and all that sort of stuff, uh, it's coming, guys. It's coming. Um, OIDA uh, has put up a hell of a fight. Um, there's, there's really, it, it, it's done, okay? Um, it's going to take a miracle and an act of God, basically, uh, or maybe possibly an act of Trump. How about that? Uh to reverse this rule, to reverse this mandate, okay? Um, but personally, me and, and all the other uh, educated truckers out here, uh, it, it's coming, okay? So that's just the way it's going to be, and uh, we're just going to have to adapt and, and overcome that, uh, just like anything else in life. Life is full of changes. So either adapt and, and, and uh, overcome it or, or get left behind, you know. Um, I don't really want to uh, drag that out any further than it is. Uh, just the bottom line on that is it's coming. Uh, I've been running e-logs for about five years now. I ran paper before that since I first started back in 06. And, uh, you know, to be honest with you, uh, e-log isn't it's not the problem um i do just fine on e-log uh there are some problems though and uh you know it basically i i mean me personally i like it i think it's easy uh you just push a button <coughs> ah, excuse me push a button and uh and boom it's it's recording your time you know um, it's real easy to edit. Uh, you don't have to worry about having any supplies, you know, pins, pencils, a, a ruler, anything like that to do it. Um, it does the math for you, uh, which is part of, I'll touch on that real quick, is uh, of what I believe of why we're going to e-logs is because people are getting stupid. People are getting more stupider. Uh, they're not very good at math. Um, hell, I'm not a math whiz, but uh, you know these guys that are that are coming up and in, into the the industry, um, a lot of them are doing really good to be able to fuel the truck uh, without catching themselves on fire. Uh, it might sound funny, but uh, it's it's true out here. I mean, it's getting really bad, and it's not just truck drivers in general. It's just people. Um, it seems as the technology age. Uh, progresses we get more stupider <laughs> so I think that might be a lot of it is that you know the drivers just aren't keeping track of their time uh, they don't know what to do they don't know how to do it they were never trained to do it 
uh, running paper logs. So e-logs is just easy, all right? And it's a, a, an easier way for the mega carriers to be able to manage their logs uh, for a DOT audit versus hiring personnel um, and, and, and software that will scan and do and check your logbook as you turn it in, your, your paper logbook, you know? Um, here with this e-log, uh, it just goes right straight to a computer and um, and it, it checks your log out, you know, to check for any violations, all right? Now with the paper log, uh, you gotta have somebody to, uh, to look through it, you know? Um, which takes time and, and resources and money, and I get that. But uh, you know these mega carriers—they're trying to save money and make money. Uh, so e-logs, it, it works, okay? And, and I get it, I get it, I really do. Um, and e-logs aren't the main problem here; they're really not. Um, like I said, I've been running e-logs for about five years. Uh, with this new company I'm, not, uh, I'm at now, uh, it's all owner op, and uh, they're giving us the option. It was optional when I came here. Um, I went ahead and I, uh, uh, I went ahead and did it. You know, uh, I volunteered for the e-logs because that's what I've been running. That's what I'm used to, and uh, going back to paper seemed like a little bit of a hassle. Um, but that was my decision, all right? Uh, come de December, uh, it's gonna be mandatory. So I was like, you know what, screw it, I'm just gonna go ahead. Let me check out that Let me turn that radio down there, guys, got a little bit of chatter. Yeah, I, I actually run a CB radio, how about that? Um, anyway, uh, I volunteered for the e-logs, and it's uh, there is a charge like uh, like Steve was saying in his video uh, there will be a charge to the drivers now some companies you get in with the bigger company and whatnot uh, they're gonna absorb that cost or at least help you out with it uh, a lot of companies will not I am with a company that will not um, they will do a free install they'll install the unit uh, in the truck for free <coughs> but Right here, right now, I'm paying $65 a month for the uh, for the service. Okay, and uh, there's nothing, not a damn thing I can do about that. Now, these independents that are going to have to switch over to e-logs, uh, they're not going to have that big company or or have a company to to back them on their finances. So they're going to be paying out of pocket for the device itself which uh, it's anywhere from three to 500 bucks, and, uh, and then the service fee, the monthly service fee. <coughs> so it's an added expense. Add that to the bills. Add that to the bills, guys. Um, what I wanna, really want to hit on is, uh, is what Steve was talking about, and, and Woody, too. Uh, a lot of us have been putting out videos about the e-logs here lately because it's becoming a real, a real issue. Okay, and uh, this one here, it's not against e-logs, and uh, I don't believe uh, Steve Neal was, was really talking too bad about e-logs either. That's not the way I took it. Uh, it's this damn 14-hour rule, okay? Uh, e-logs are not the problem. It's the hours of service, okay? The 14-hour rule. And uh, if you go back and watch his video, or if you haven't, you know, he gave an example of basically where you run out of time in the day, okay? <coughs> um, I'm living that. I'm living his example right now. And uh, let's get around these guys here. Hang out in the left lane for a minute. Um, I'm driving. I've got about a seven-hour drive ahead of me. Okay, uh, well, uh, we're in the middle of this seven hour drive, and uh, I'm gonna be at my shipper, at my receiver, right around three o'clock this afternoon. Okay, now I call them, says on the bills to call <coughs> and call in advance and uh, let them know. So I did that, I called him. Uh, today's one of those days where uh, just shit's going to happen. Uh, what can and will go wrong is going to go wrong. Um, they had some people call in uh, today, and he's short-staffed. 
uh, on receivers, <coughs> okay, on people that can unload. Um, he's not going to have anybody there to unload me until around 6.30 this evening, all right? <coughs> By the time I get unloaded, I'm going to be pushing up against my 14-hour clock, okay? Uh, there's not a damn thing that I can do about it. <coughs> damn. Uh, there's, there's nothing that I can do to stop that 14-hour clock. Nothing. It's going to keep on ticking. Now, when I get there, I'm still pushing on. <coughs> I'm going to be there at right around 3 o'clock. I'm not changing. I'm not deviating from my plan. Just in case there is somebody there to unload me. Um, but if these guys show up at 6 o'clock and start unloading me at 7... Uh, say, uh, you know, worst case scenario, I'm finally empty by 8, I'm done. I'm done. My day is over, okay? Even though uh, as soon as I get there at 3 o'clock, I'm going to do a little bit of paperwork, and then I'm going to climb in the back and uh, grab a nap because I'm, you know, I'm a little bit tired, and I'll grab a nap. So I've got some energy uh, to do the unloading process here, <coughs> all right? Now, once I'm empty, <coughs> man, sorry about that, guys. Uh, once I'm empty, my day is done. It's it's completely done, okay? Now, I've already got a pre-plan that's picking up 300 miles away. And I'll tell you, it's one of them unicorn loads. One of those loads that, uh, that doesn't come around very often and that I desperately need. Uh, paying about four dollars a mile How about that four dollars a mile is my next load, okay? <coughs> if I can get there By a certain time tomorrow morning, okay, so I'm driving seven hours today To get there and I'm gonna waste. Uh, let's see three four five six seven, uh, four hours there I'll be uh, 11 hours <coughs> grand total 11 or 12 maybe uh, 13 hours by the time I get empty this afternoon but I'm only driving for seven and I did a, a pre-trip this morning <coughs> good lord got into some dust or something here uh, so I'll be uh, my day will be about 12 or 13 hours okay I've only driven for seven I've really only been on duty for about seven and a half, maybe eight. All right, so that leaves me uh, eight, nine, 10, 11. That leaves me three hours left that I could drive. I could go. I feel good. Um, I, I'll grab me a nap when I get there, and uh, I will definitely have enough energy to drive another three hours and get knock out some of those miles. Uh, getting to my next load, that $4 a mile load, which I almost desperately need. Okay, we're going through winter. I need a good load right now. <coughs> if I can't do that, which I'm not going to be able to because of the 14-hour rule, I'm probably going to miss out on that $4 a mile load. Okay, and it's just like that. There's not a damn thing that I can do any different to change that because of this 14-hour rule. That's taken money out of my pocket. That's taken uh, food out of my children's mouths at home just because of one simple 14 hour rule. I'm not tired. I'm gonna be fine. Like I said, when I get there, I'm gonna grab me a nap. Hell, uh, you tell me that, that if I take a four hour nap while I'm waiting for those guys to get there and, and unload me, that I'm not, that I'm not gonna be a safe driver uh, to go down the road an extra three hours, you know? Uh, I mean, come on. I'm a big boy. We're all big boys. Our title is professional truck driver, okay? We're professionals. We're big boys and girls out here. <coughs> we know when we're tired, okay? Uh, if I'm tired, I'll pull over and shut it down, okay? I don't need uh, uh, an electric box to tell me that I'm tired. <laughs> so, the bottom line is e-logs aren't the problem here, okay? They're really not. 
don't don't think that they are don't say you know i've heard a lot of people uh uh saying this and, and woody talks about this a lot in his e-log video uh about people are talking stuff and, and saying that you're selling out to the government and uh you know it's it's just another way for for them to control your life which i partially agree with that uh however uh, you talk about selling out to the government and uh, all this sort of stuff. If you have a driver's license, pay your taxes, do anything, you've already, you're already attached to the government, right? So, I mean, it's not a big deal. It's not that big of a deal, guys. Uh, you're not selling out to the government. You've already sold out to the government. You're already property of the government, all right? That's a fact, Jack. So, putting a little bit of an electric box in your truck uh, ain't going to kill you. However, that 14-hour rule mixed with the electronic logbook <coughs> is deadly. It's deadly, okay? And that's where I'm sticking to my guns on that. Uh, on my previous video of e-logs are bad for your health, okay? And it's, it's like Steve Neal was talking, uh, you know, if we don't have the 14-hour rule and we're heading into uh, a big city, we'll say Atlanta, at, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, as of right now, with that 14-hour clock ticking, we have no choice but to go ahead and push on through and, and sit in rush hour traffic because that clock is ticking, okay? Now, if the 14 rule was gone, 14 hour rule was gone, we could, could lay up short, find a truck stop, rest area somewhere before we get to Atlanta. <coughs> get out, take a walk, walk the dog, go get something to eat, grab another short little nap, okay? And wait for rush hour traffic to die to die out and then push on through and not even touch the brakes you know uh, it saves us money it saves us wear and tear on the truck um, it, it, we're a lot safer because we're not mixed up in in that traffic okay um, at any time out here I mean anything could happen we're out in the wild so uh, racing the clock on top of that is not good all right if that 14 hour rule disappears, which I strongly think it should, it takes off so much stress out here. Unbelievable amount of stress that's just gonna go away, all right? Because we're not racing that 14 hour clock. We're not, uh, if we get delayed at a shipper or receiver, we're not gonna have to run these trucks as fast <coughs> to make up time. You know, um, running these trucks fast, uh, it just adds up the maintenance. Tires are wearing down faster. Um, everything's uh, breaking down faster. The faster you drive these things, the faster they're going to break down. And, and that's another fact, Jack. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's this damn 14-hour rule that's really killing us out here, even the guys on paper logs. Um, I know damn near every day, almost every day that I do a load, I'm bumping up against that 14 hour clock. I am. Uh, getting unloaded in the morning, <coughs> driving to the next place, uh, getting unloaded, and then trying to go down the road to pick up my next one, to do my job. That's our job out here is deliver freight, pick up and deliver freight. So, <coughs> um, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. And I mean, I hope this video gets out there. I hope everybody shares Steve Neal's video, uh, Woody's video, this video. Uh, I'm on board 100% with this 14 hour rule garbage. Uh, if they're gonna shove e-logs down our throat, which they are, we need to stand up and have this 14 hour rule just eliminated, just take it out. Take it out. Um, and, and put the professional truck driver title back. We're professionals, okay? Uh, if you don't know when you're tired or if you're stupid and, uh, you know, like I said in my, my previous, one of my previous videos, uh, are you getting enough sleep? You know, that was a huge video. And then that affects a lot of people, a lot of drivers out here. Are you getting enough sleep? Are you wasting time playing video games, messing around with your phone, doing all that sort of stuff? You know, 
Uh, that was another good video there. Um, maybe, maybe truck driving ain't for you. You know, if, if you don't know when you're tired and if you don't know that, that you have a responsibility out here to do your job, then, then maybe it ain't for you. You know, um, I'm a professional. I know when I'm tired. Okay. When, when I need to get some sleep, I, I know there's no, there's no substitute for sleep. You can grab all the monsters and, and energy drinks and, and everything legal that you can have. Uh, but there's no, uh, there's no replacement for sleep. That's just, there's none. So we need to be big boys and big girls out here. Um, figure out your duties, your, your job responsibilities. Okay. And, and this 14 hour rules, it, it's killing it. All right. So that's about all I got. Just wanted to revise it. Um, again, I'm sticking to my guns on the e-logs are bad for your health, uh, because we don't have time to, uh, to stop the truck. We're constantly pushing up against that 14 hour clock to sit in the seat, keep the left door closed and haul ass. Okay. And that's where the problems start. That's, that's where accidents happen. Uh, people get people uh, racing through the truck stops. Uh, you all see that every time you're in a truck stop. There's some jackass uh, that, that's racing through the truck stop, just grabbing a fistful of gears, hauling ass, popping wheelies through the damn truck stop uh, because he's in a hurry and racing the damn clock. You know, uh, that shit's got to stop. And it's very frustrating out here. So uh, go ahead and share this video. Uh, go watch uh, Steve Neal's video, um, Trucking on the Go. Check out his new channel. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button on that. Real good dude. And uh, Woody's got a video about e-logs also. Go check that out. <coughs> all right, guys. That's all I got for you on this one. Uh, just wanted to hit on it real quick. And uh, for God's sakes, if, if y'all know anyone, any, uh, any lawyers or, or, or anybody that can help us out, uh, you know, get in a big petition to sign and maybe we can get that up to Trump and uh, he can help do something to help us out out here. All right. But uh, that's it. That's all I got. You guys be safe out there and uh, remember to be the professional, set the example. I'll talk to you later.